style How master. So good to see you guys. A, a, a hipster maven. So good to see you guys. Okay, let me start with this. I saw a story today. Listen. Jason Kidd to the Lakers, and I thought, oh, he's perfect. He's famous. They only hire famous people now in Los Angeles. <laughs> Jason Kidd to the Lakers. Well, what do you make of that? I don't, I don't like that. I don't like Jason Kidd to the Lakers. I love Jason Kidd as a, um, a player when he played. Uh, he's actually one of my favorites. Maybe to me, to me, there's Magic Johnson, there's Jason Kidd. Uh, as far as point guards. Yeah. Uh, and that's just my opinion. Uh, super smart. Super smart on the court. But, I mean, Jason had successful as a coach. What, what year was really successful? He left Milwaukee. They went from seventh to the best team in the East. Right, right. Like, I don't know. I, I just don't. I don't like Jason Kidd, especially with LeBron James. Why? <laughs> Le- LeBron's hard to coach. Uh, yeah. And see, Jason's better playing with LeBron James like he did Carmelo Anthony opposed to – and LeBron James and Jason Kidd kind of play the same, right? They're triple doubles in the making. Yeah. They're both cerebral. They're both uh, um, um, make their team better, right? You could be a pack of cools and they're still going to make it look good. Like it's just – that's just Jason Kidd. But when it comes to being a coach and coaching a superstar – it just doesn't match up with Jason Kidd to me. By the way, the three coaches this year, three of the bo- four best records in the NBA, the coaches name Nick Nurse, Mike Malone, and Mike Budenholzer. They're not famous. No. I know I know. the Lakers are now addicted to famous people in their franchise. Right, right. It's like, by and large in the NBA, nobody knew who Popovich was before he was Greg Popovich and winning titles. Right. Like, famous coaches generally – that means they were successful doing something else, and right. coach is an absolute grind. I'm not a big fan of famous coaches. I want to shift to this. There are times in basketball, which has always been a team game, where a wildly talented scorer, Kyrie Irving, mm-hmm. can struggle with a coach that has a strong system. Right. Could I make the argument, it's nobody's fault, but when you give me the Celtics numbers with and without Kyrie Irving, our radio audience can't see this, and there's too many numbers to read. They are significantly better without Kyrie. They average almost 10 points a game more. For a fact. They shoot better. Their spacing's better. Can I just argue, Coutinho, they're just not a good fit. Nothing against either. A coach, a player. Right. They don't work together. He's more of an ISO, great individual, one-on-one player. Right, right. Listen, you're spot on. And listen, I'm not just saying this, but you guys on this show are so accurate. And that's just my opinion. Like, what I think you guys say. And Kyrie Irving, to me, it's like Allen Iverson. Jerry Stackhouse was there. Tim Thomas was there. Larry Hughes is there. They leave. They're all stars. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, so now Allen Iverson has to get Eric Snow and Aaron McKee and Matumbo. There and were people George that Lynch. Allen played well <laughs> with. with. And those guys sacrificed their bodies and were defensive guys. Maybe that's what Kyrie needs. Because having these guys who are young, Tatums and Browns and Smarts and, and Rogiers, they want to be stars as well. And they like to play well together. It's like Kyrie is, like you say, he's an ISO, more individual guy. But for the record, I, I said this. If you did an all-time one-on-one tournament in the NBA, mm-hmm. like all the great players, but you'd have to do like 6-3 and under, mm-hmm. then 6-4 to 6-7, right. then bigs. Right. You can't have Kareem facing Isaiah Thomas. Right, right. I could make an argument, 6-3 and under, Kyrie would win the tournament. He's I, one of the great one-on-one players you, left or right in the history of basketball. I love that. I think the top three finalists for that, I love this one. The top three finalists for that is Kyrie Irving, Isaiah Thomas, the old Isaiah Thomas. Oh, Isaiah Thomas was. Isaiah Thomas, Detroit Pistons, because he had so much heart. And and he was so talented. And uh, my last one would be. uh, uh, Well, not Steph Curry. I would go Allen Iverson. Because Allen Iverson was deceptive. He was. See, some guys are like fast, and then some guys are quick. He was both. Yeah. I mean, he had floaters from, from damn near, you know, 15 feet from the basket. Right. <laughs> off the glass. He was, he was so hard to stop. And I think Kyrie is – and I, some, this is where I defend – let's say it was singing. Mm-hmm. Let's take basketball out. Okay. And let's say Joy had the – she had a Whitney Houston voice. Yeah. You do, don't you? It, of course. In so, my mind. I yeah, do. yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. all of a sudden, she joins a choir. Right. And the choir – the teacher of the choir is legendary. Right. Okay. Right. But she's really the next Whitney Houston. Right. 
of course it would be hard because singing voices, you know, they don't last forever. Right. You have like an athlete, you got about 15 years to hit it and the voice goes down. Anybody that's seen an old rock and roll concert, you know, it's more music than voice. Right. Of course it would be difficult for the superstar singer mm -hmm. with a limited shelf life to play within a system because Kyrie's walking into the gym every day thinking, I'm the best one-on-one -on -one player ever in my sport. I mean, he told Kobe that. Remember that? Yes. You see uh, what they were, the uh, USA games, and uh, they were in practice, and he said, I'll beat you one-on-one. -on -one. Kobe's like, are you serious? Are you on drugs? Of course you're not going to beat me. Now, 6'4 to 6'7 is Kobe Bryant all day long. Right. Because he's not playing. So I, I guess what I'm saying is I don't think less of Kyrie or less of Brad Stevens. I think you have an all-time classic one-on-one -on -one player and an all-time system offensive guy. By the way, Mike D'Antoni is a good coach, doesn't work with a lot of bigs. Greg Popovich does not work with ball stoppers. Right. You know, right. Kobe always said I would have loved to play with Pop. Yeah, I don't think Pop would have wanted to coach Kobe. Right. I right. think Duncan worked for him. Manu worked for him. Tony Parker worked for him. I don't know. Let, let me shift to this. Mm -hmm. Lonzo Ball. Mm. Sad story this weekend. Ah, oh, it's crazy, huh? Awful. Oh. So LeVar Ball gets kind of scammed by a business guy, allegedly. They'll figure out $1.5 million has gone. Lonzo had warned him. His business partners, the bank had warned LeVar, get out of this relationship. Right. But it, I, I, I'm wondering, does this whole thing force Lonzo to separate from his dad a little? I mean, it would be a great excuse, don't you think? I mean, for me, so I'm, I'm listening to the whole tobacco the whole crazy thing that's going on and I for Lonzo to say listen I want to part ways like I'm cool it's something else going on besides that with inside the family I don't know just speculating with inside the family where you know you're taking pictures down from your pop you're you know um you're quoting Nike uh you're just kind of being your own self now what else is going on besides that money part right because if something happens in your family and I've done nothing wrong to you Joy or Colin and we're family for years and one thing happens and it's about money do you get to that extreme or do we talk about it first so something else is going on with inside that family what we know nothing about Maybe pulling the youngest out of school. Now he's not eligible for college. Maybe the other one pulling him out of UCLA where well, you got him a scholarship there because he thought the youngest was going to go hey, there. Listen, or the other. Young people, we listen to our dads. Right. And then there, there comes a point with our fathers yeah. that we realize they're human. Right. And sometimes we separate, if not emotionally, professionally from our dads. Right. We realize, you know, dad doesn't get technology. He dropped the ball. Dad dropped the ball. He dropped the ball. I actually think. You know, one of the things that I didn't love early in the Lavar Alonzo thing was his kids didn't talk. Right. Let us, yeah. I, I mean, dad they were was mute. They were mute. They were mute. It's like the youngest one did speak and he said something crazy when they were the yeah. WWF or whatever, the WWE they had to ban him from talking because he just got a little crazy yeah. and said some inappropriate stuff. But other than that, they don't even talk. They're mute. Yeah, I think he's separating. Finally, Zion Williamson. Wow. I, I think he's going to be an NBA star. I think Ugh. he's big, quick, got great touch. I think he's got a great joy for the game. Mm -hmm. I think his body is you can't duplicate it. Yeah. I see Larry Johnson plus Charles Barkley. Yes, plus, that's what I said. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. So that. what do you make of Zion? Just, I, just all like a lot of people are saying he could get heavy. He's not tall enough. He'll get overwhelmed by length and bigs. Like, what do you see? Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. What I'm just looking, it's like the eye test, right? This kid is super special. That's one thing. Okay. And he can improve jump shots, playmaking, right? Look not have to use, I Look mean, he's just. It's it's unbelievable to be 285. 285. And, so, and to be so fast like that. It's kind of like Shaquille O'Neal-ish to me. Where you're so big, but yet you're so agile. Go right? YouTube Charles Barkley at Auburn. Yes. He was chubby. Phenomenal. And would race guys down the floor. Unbelievable. Fast break. Look one minute fast move. break. Look at that move right there by Zion. Sorry for yes. our radio audience. They, we keep showing that one move. Joy, where he goes and he hops. Yeah. It's not this one. Now I want I want to show our TV audience this. So I apologize to the radio audience. Watch this hop move. Now I want you to watch this. Not this one. It'll come up right after this. This is just brute strength, which he obviously has. All right, we got about six highlights. I want to show it one more time. Look at this. Watch. Look yeah, at this. See that? Look see at that? the speed. There's nothing wrong with that's that. That's a three hundred pound dude. Yeah, that's nothing wrong with that knee. The way he hops <laughs> like that, he just gets right. He's like a pogo stick. He gets right back up, and all that weight. I don't think people really understand all that weight 
And Full by the way, speed down the court. In college, you can have congestion in the paint, but in the NBA, it's all spread out. He's going to get one-on-one matchups against 235-pound guys. As soon as he rips through in the NBA, it's a dunk. It's a Blake Griffin. Yeah. You can forget about it. Yeah. Coutinho Mobley, good seeing you, bud. Thanks for having me. 11 Appreciate seasons in the NBA. We love having you on. Sharp dressed man. Jo- Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.